Hi, it's Brad from Basefield again. Uh, this is a new video series, video series two, um, that goes over how to use all the data, which we went over in video series one, uh, to provide real-time monitoring for your renewable power plants. Um, so we'll be going over a few applications that are pretty common across our, our different operators. But again, please watch video series one, which should be if you're on YouTube, like over there or below me or somewhere, hopefully in the page. Um, but yeah, let's get going. Part one of our from the ground up monitoring video series is going to cover our main monitoring application. And that is called asset operations. And it's really the home page that you'll often land on uh, when you come into Bayesfield. Um, so we'll just do a quick review of some of the data we collect. Again, that was all video series one, uh, which you should definitely watch. And uh, we'll talk about use cases in the context of real-time monitoring and kind of where real-time monitoring sits in the hierarchy of things. And then we'll give you a demonstration specifically on asset operations and the different ways you can use uh, the, the tool to monitor your, your power plants. So if we go back, uh, we showed this, this nice, uh, beautiful hierarchy I made in video series one uh, to kind of show you how we build up data from, from a raw SCADA standpoint to the ERP level. And really this is base field here in the middle. Uh, so video series one focused all on data integration and object modeling. That's really laying the foundation. In monitoring, what we're trying to do now is really build the structure and, and building the house so it's useful. So we're, 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 we're really building it to, uh, to be a, a useful piece of software rather than just a, you know, a blob, so to speak. Um, so another way of thinking about this is uh, video series one, we're down here in the basement. The basement's not really useful for anything, but it's, it's required for the house, right? It holds the house up. You need it to store stuff. It's kind of the same in Basefield. The data integration's not, you know, it's not fun from a user perspective, but it's, it's required. Really what gets us from data integration to real-time monitoring is the domain models, which we showed you in video series one. And once you do that, you can start to uniformly um, look at the performance of all your assets in real time very easily uh, using asset operations. So we're kind of uh, on the ground floor here in real-time monitoring. Uh, and really the, the purpose is we need to now, with all this data, we need to monitor the critical statuses and conditions of the assets. We need to be able to add context to that data, perhaps add workflow to that data. And we also want to get alerted, uh, whether it be email or text message or pop-up alert of, of critical conditions and things that are happening. Um, so we want to make a, a real-time uh, operator's job easy because if they're sitting around looking at Bayesfield, they have a lot of different concerns, right? As you can see, again, this is my, my son Camden, uh, which you can remember from video series one. And he's again looking at Bayesfield and he's, he's got a lot of anxiety. You know, he's operating a real-time power plant. He doesn't know what he should be doing. He doesn't know what's online, what's offline. You know, he wants to know why machines are offline, how long they've been offline, and what he can do about it. And that's really the purpose of uh, our monitoring tool and our asset operations tool. So with that, let's get into asset operations and the various things uh, you can do uh, with it from a real-time monitoring perspective. Okay, we're back in the Basefield portal looking at our asset operations application. For most of you, asset operations is your homepage. Uh, if not, you can make it your homepage. Or you can always navigate it uh, to it, rather, by going into monitoring and clicking asset operations. Um, we'll go over a lot of different use cases here. Um, one of the, the first things is to just simply filter out by operational state. If you remember, operational state is denoted by color. Uh, here and can be used in the filter. So if you just want to come in here and see any asset uh, in your fleet that is stopped, you can just hit stopped and you can see whether it's inverter or turbine. Uh, you can see uh, that it is stopped and how long it's been stopped. So this is how long the, uh, the IEC operation state tag, how long ago it basically changed value. Um, you can also see if there's no communication. So in Basefield, we monitor what we call the communication state of every single asset and every single site. So for example, if the active power or wind speed or radiance flatlines, we will throw a communication error and you'll be able to see that in real time uh, in your fleet uh, by this little asset indicator. And you can see the screen move around as, a, as it sits. This is all real time information. So as events occur, as alarms occur, as things change, the icons change and resort themselves uh, automatically. Uh, you can also, uh, in, in real time, get audio alerts. And I'm just going to turn this on before I forget. 
every user can set alarms or rather pop-up notifications based on when certain types of outages occur. So for example, um, in the example I'm about to show you, I've basically set a pop-up notification for any type of stop, but you could trigger it to just be maybe grid stops or maintenance stops. But uh, for now, it's gonna show up uh, for any stop. I'm gonna say start alarm notification. And the next time a machine stops or changes into a state mode, the, the state stop mode, I'm gonna get a nice visual and audio indicator. So I'm gonna keep doing the, doing the demo here but if something pops up, that's, that's the reason why. Okay, um, when machines are stopped, um, you'll see what the event is that, did uh, that, that caused this, uh, both the code and the description. So this is all the event data in those uh, domain uh, event templates that we showed you in series one. The cool part about those, uh, those templates, if you remember, is you, could have add, uh, you can add remarks to the individual events. So it gives you basically a flexible way to kind of see um, you know, what maybe you could do about this maintenance, maybe more detail about this maintenance code. Um, and these could be anything the user wants. So it could be you know, three troubleshooting techniques that you need to do for this certain event whenever it hits. Uh, but remarks can be very useful and they're embedded right in asset operations uh, as popovers uh, when you hover over the alarm. Beyond just looking at the most recent alarm, you can drill into any of these guys and look at any of the uh, most recent events, whether it's a turbine inverter or any type of asset. Uh, so you can see when they started, when they edited, and you even have a link to go to the complete alarm log uh, here, which we'll, we'll get into that a little bit in video series three about alarms and availability. Uh, but you have a, a link really to, to click to it uh, and to, to go from there. One common thing that you'll want to do is, you know, obviously this is great. You see what's stopped, what's running uh, for any site, uh, but you, you might want to launch um, workflow uh, to this. So let's say, you know, you're always interested in the, in the so what, you know, what can I, oh, there we go. So I just had a new stop here, uh, stopped a minute ago. Um, I can mute it. Uh, I can set an acknowledgement state to it. So I'm just going to postpone that. You can see it disappeared here. So that's an example of the pop-up and I'll turn it off if it gets too annoying. <laughs> so one simple thing is that, you know, this is great, remarks are great, but sometimes you need to make comments uh, about a little bit more about what's, uh, what might be going on. So, you know, if this, if, this, uh, if this maintenance, you don't really know what type of maintenance it is. So you might want to add a comment that it's uh, pitch motor maintenance. You can add that comment. And when I've done that, you can see it shows up in the screen here. Now, if you're an administrator, somebody has privileges, you can also hide or delete comments and manage them that way. Um, so that gives a little qualitative information about this, about this issue now. Uh, you can do the same for any asset here. Uh, you might want to add, though, a physical piece of work or a task or a reminder to somebody to do that work. You know? So I could say, go do pitch inspection. And I could give it any type of generic title, description assign it to uh, engineer A and uh, give it a, a, a new state and give them a due date of, uh, you know, we're in a tight de uh, deadline. Oh, so let's say, there we go, there's my pop-up. Tight deadline, let's do uh, next week and a critical priority and hit save. That task will be saved and then if I wanna add maybe an inspection manual for him or maybe a previous inspection report or any type of document, maybe it's an image, or if he did the inspection and wanted to upload an image as a result, you know, he could attach then a document to this, um, and it could be anything. It could be a document already in the system or a new document from your computer. So you could do new document, upload something from your PC, or attach an existing document. Then you hit save, that task is saved, and that person who you assign it to gets an email and a reminder, say, here, this task has been created. Um, and they can always then manage that task in our operations management tool. Uh, so any task that's been created, uh, for any object, for any uh, solar or any PV site, any wind site, um, you can quickly sort and filter those tasks uh, either by type, by site, by inverter, by turbine, whatever. A great thing too is here you can then edit these tasks. You can show them as um, complete. You can uh, just look at your specific tasks. Or if you want to create this as a larger work item, let's say you wanted to link in five tasks to a a scheduled uh, gearbox and inspection work order. You could add that work order in this menu and then just go to tasks and attach all those tasks. So, you know, any task that you've created can be added to a, uh, a work order here. 
So different, different hierarchies of how you can add kind of workflow to the system. We also, I should know, we integrate with third-party CMMS systems if you use another system to manage your kind of tasks and, and work orders and things of that nature. So that's just a little bit on operations management. By no means are we going to give a full uh, demonstration here. We're going to go back to asset operations. And uh, I'm going to turn off my alarm notification there because it was getting kind of annoying, right? Um, go back here. I'm going to clear all my filters so I can see everything again. While we've gone over most of the use cases here, um, the, the final piece is this little workflow state. So in Basefield, you can add these custom statuses, and this is really useful in a remote operating center. So this allows you to maybe escalate certain things or postpone certain things, or these don't have to be these exact indicators. You could add your own set of six workflow states that you want to manage your remote operating center by. And you can just have all of those popped up and you can sort, um, you can then sort by them, or if you want to filter by them and just say escalated, you can see just the, the stops that have been escalated. Not just from this screen, uh, you can embed asset operations in a base field dashboard. Um, so what we can do there then is we can take that, that acknowledgement, that same use case, um, and let's say we wanted to look at it slightly differently. Um, we could set up a, a dashboard in Basefield, and I'm just going to go to that one now, where the, that asset operations application is just simply used as a widget. So you could look at your escalations on the right-hand side of your screen, um, and you could look at your, your new stops on the left-hand side of the screen. Uh, the other thing you could do with um, really the asset operations widget is break things up by, uh, by type of outage or by, by site. So when I click, um, let's say instead of a fleet monitor, I just wanted to uh, look at uh, you know, a single site here. I can just update this asset operations widget and it will just show me that certain site I've chosen. Um, or I could use that asset operations widget and filter out by type of uh, stop. So here we have now a collection of widgets and each of these asset operations uh, little guys uh, is filtered by the type of stop. So not just my filtering by stop, but I'm saying uh, show me the, let's say the uh, forced outages only. And it will show me just the machines that are kind of tripped in forced outages or just the machines that are in maintenances. Uh, so this is a nice way from a remote operator standpoint you could see you know, not just why they're stopped in one screen, but you could have one fleet monitoring screen for different types of technologies to look at why they're stopped. Um, so just endless amounts of ways you can use the asset operations widget from a site monitoring or an asset monitoring perspective to display exactly what you want to do. Um, and that's kind of a, an overall summary of the tool.